high, high. Okay, so let's talk about the Gilded Age. Um, I guess, first of all, Mark Twain coined the phrase or, you know, named the era the Gilded Age. Okay, why did he do that? What was the point? Okay, so Gilded. Gilded is like, for example, this is not gold. It's not, doesn't even look like gold. It's kind of like a rose color, okay? Um, but gilded is something that is, let's say this was gold. It looks like gold, and it's gold on the outside. It's, you know, gold-plated or painted with gold. But on the inside, it's just junk, metal. You know, nothing of value, okay? The outside looks pretty, but on the inside, it's not so pretty. So that's, if that gives you any kind of hint of how the era was, is the Gilded Age. So it was pretty on the outside. It looked good, but what was really going on was not good. A lot of things like corruption that we're going to talk about, um, a lot of, you know, there were a lot of poverty issues, there were a lot of issues that came up with the city, so anyway, with overpopulation. So, let's pushes and pulls for immigration, a push, that means, you know, the other country, like if you're coming from Germany, they pushed you out, there was something negative that happened. Okay, a positive means that, you know, you're wanting to go to America in order to get something for something positive. Okay, um, settling the West, abundance of indus industry jobs, those are positives. Negatives, pushes to the United States are things like the potato famine and um, you know, persecution based on um, religion or race or whatnot. Sorry, my bangs are, I'm still giving them a try. We'll see. Um, so immigration is going to triple in po the population in the United States. There's going to be two kinds. Um, another positive, I skipped over this, was, you know, it was pretty, in there were some pretty inexpensive ways to get to the United States. So this was an incentive. Before, it was really scary, um, and it was a must just to get there, okay? So two kinds of immigrants at this time. You've got old immigrants, and you've got new immigrants, and they were very different, okay? The old are from the north, and the West, remember, never eat shredded wheat. If y'all y'all may know another um, acronym, but um, so the North and the West, the Brits, the Irish, the Germans, these people, majority of the time, were literate. They were of Protestant faith, so that means not Catholic, but Christians. Okay, um, hopefully you covered that in world history on what Protestant means. If not, we need to go back. Let me know. Most of them spoke English, and most of them had occupational skills. Okay, they had some kind of skill set that could be used in the workforce. Now, new immigrants, these are from the Southern and Eastern Europe. Most of the time, these were the Italians, the Greeks, the Slovaks, the Poles, the Russians. Most of the time, they were poor and illiterate. They could not read. They thought democracy was strange. They weren't really all gung ho for this whole, de you know, democratic America. Um, most of the time, they were of some kind of Orthodox faith, which is Catholic or Jewish or some kind of Orthodox um, other religion. They moved to poor ethnic neighborhoods when they got to America. So they tried, they didn't want to expand and become part of America. They wanted to become, they wanted to be around the things they knew. They wanted, you know, to be in America for something, 
Okay. Uh, and that's where you get like in New York, you've got Chinatown, you've got um, different parts where the Slovaks all congregated and lived. Okay. 25% um, of these people became birds of passage. Okay. So that just means, giving you a um, you know, they came to America, made money, and they went back to their native country. Okay, young men, unskilled laborers that worked and then brought back money to their native country. So, labor unions, nativists, and social Darwinists support immigration restrictions. Read the circle first right here. Okay. There are five immigration restrictions that go through. The first, Chinese exclusion. The second, restricted undesirables, paupers. Those are you know, people that beg for money, criminals, mentally ill. The third, restricted temporary workers. So restricted those that are saying, I'm a bird of passage. I'm coming to get money and I'm going to go home. The fourth required a literacy test to enter. All these literacy tests are not always fair, okay? And the fifth, Ellis Island required a rigorous medical literacy and a tax to be paid at Ellis Island. There are two immigration stations, Ellis Island and Angel Island. Ellis Island is the Statue of Liberty. And Angel Island is off the coast of California. Okay. Those are where, you know, when people immigrated, that's where they went. Industrialization. This is, you know, think about factories. Think about, um, you know, industry work workers. It's going to simultaneously make urbanization. So as factories go up, City life will increase. Urban is city, rural is farming or, you know, agriculture. By 1920, we will have more people in the city than in rural areas, which will be a huge step. Okay, but this massive influx of people causes some problems. Cities grow, so so does transportation. It goes mass transportation, goes hand in hand. You've got streetcars. Um, you know, people could live farther away from their job. You know, got electric trolleys and subways that allowed them to live even farther. And then we get suspension bridges that connect cities, city to city. So now people could live in other cities. Mass transportation will cause segregate, segregating, okay? First, it will be more of a segregation about money and wealth, and then it will turn, sadly, into a racial segregation. Urban workers will be segregated by income, okay? And that's what we'll see. So the upper and middle classes move to the suburbs. What's a suburb? If this is a city, around the city is the suburb. Okay? The growth of cities and you know, poverty causes pollution, poverty, and crime. You get typhoid, cholera, TB outbreaks, um, you know, these upper class are going to leave these big fancy homes in the cities and move to the suburbs. So no one's really going to be able to afford a big fancy home. So someone is going to buy the big fancy home and divide it up into tenements, what they call dumbbell tenements, because dumbbell waiters um, would carry you know, there's going to be dumbbell waiters and where they live. It's almost like an apartment complex, but it's not going to be quite so cookie cutter-ish. You know, not everything's going to look the same. Um, 
That's what they're called dumbbell tenements. And then you're going to get greedy landlords, okay, um, you know, putting more people than they should in one area. So the American dream is going to become to live on green grass and, you know, live in the privacy of your own home. Okay, it's no longer, you know, just to um, live in America. Okay, also, this is going to cause architects to create cities of American ideal of living. It's called kind of like City of the Beautiful. Um, a Decatur not long ago had a beautification uh, push about, you know, making the city pretty. This is going to affect how architects, because they're going to start designing cities. And this is going to be key because cities will work better when they're designed. Um, so Frederick Law Olmsted will be a huge architect. He actually is noted for um, having created New York Central Park, creating a space in this huge city um, that is grassy and beautiful and, you know, and people in New York, you know, they value that space. So um, this kind of wraps up what the Gilded Age, we're going to get to a little bit more corruption on the next lecture video. Um, but 